the Diablo 4 open beta is right around the corner, and I know for a fact I'm not the only one that's super excited. I don't want to waste any of you Demon Slayer's time, so let's jump right into the info. First up is when does the open beta actually launch? Well, the early access open beta is March 17th at 9 a.m. PDT, and it concludes March 20th at 12 p.m. PDT. Now, the actual open beta that's available to everybody is March 24th at 9 a.m. PDT and concludes at March 27th at 12 p.m. PDT. Now, important to note that early access open beta, the only way to gain access to that is by pre-purchasing Diablo 4, and then you can play it from March 17th to March 20th, but the open beta from the 24th to the 27th, that will be available to everyone. During the early access open beta, players are only going to be able to use three different classes. That'll be the Barbarian, the Rogue, and the Sorceress. But once the open beta weekend comes around, you'll be able to play the Druid and also the Necromancer. If you're newer to the Diablo franchise, I'll give you a quick overview of these characters so you have a better idea of what to choose for the open beta to play. The Barbarian is a large tank that also deals large amounts of physical damage. This is not a dainty type of playstyle. You get right up in their faces and start bashing their demon brains in. Generally, you're going to be using a lot of melee weapons, axes, maces, swords, etc. But you will not be casting a ton of ranged spells and things like that. Next, we're on to the Rogue, and it's a little bit of a shift away from the Barbarian, but not all the way to a caster. You're still dealing physical damage, but you're doing it with things like bows from range or quick slicing attacks from things like daggers. This character will also be able to utilize traps, much like the Assassin does from Diablo 2. So you can play this character as a jack of many trades or decide to specialize on one type of attack. Anyone who's seen any type of fantasy game or movie is well acquainted with the Sorceress. This is essentially the polar opposite of the Barbarian. You're going to want to stay back at a distance and lob your attacks of lightning, fire, or cold at these demons. Now while she is considered pretty squishy, aka could probably die pretty easily, her attacks can be incredibly powerful. Now the Druid is making his triumphant return last being seen in Diablo 2. It is an absolute fan favorite. He can do a few different things from transforming into a werebear or werewolf and even summoning spirits from the environment in order to fight for him, different types of wolves and bears. Also, this type of Druid can actually cast different types of elemental skills while transforming in and out of werebear and werewolf form. He can really swap back and forth between an up-in-their-face aggressive style and more of a hang-back-and-cast type of approach. And for the fifth character here, we're going to talk about the Necromancer. If you couldn't guess by the name, he summons up the evil of the dead in order to fight for him, and along with that, he has many different types of bone and blood skills. Along with those types of abilities, he can also wield his large Sith and deal out large amounts of damage that way. Each battle net account is going to be limited to a maximum number of 10 characters. So after you reach the maximum, which is level 25 with one character, you can either continue slaying down demons or you can try a different character or a different type of build. Now the progress does transfer from early access open beta to the regular open beta, but all characters made during this weekend will be deleted once the beta ends. Now for all you daring demon slayers out there, there is actually going to be one active world boss during the open beta, stomping around at select times. During this massive world boss event, players will have to come together in order to slay this gargantuan beast. But if you do, a sizable loot drop awaits, should you be victorious. Now it wouldn't be a trip through Sanctuary if you didn't receive some unique rewards along the way. Now as you play through the open beta and the early access weekend, you can earn three open beta rewards. You will receive these rewards once Diablo 4 actually launches, so they're actually for the Diablo 4 game itself. The first one is the initial casualty title, earned by reaching Koi Vashad with one character, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, early Voyager title, earned by reaching level 20 on one character, and the beta Wolfpack cosmetic item, earned by reaching level 20 on one character. Now, I know I'm not the first one to say it, but look how cute this little puppers is. This could be the most important section of the entire video, the open beta PC specs. You want to make sure your computer can actually run it before you decide to go ahead and purchase the game, right? Or before you download the open beta. 
Now, first up are the minimum requirements for PC. These are for setting to run Diablo 4 at 1080p or 720p low resolution with low graphic settings and 30 FPS. Now for this, you need Windows 10 64-bit, an Intel Core i5, 2500K or AMD FX 8100, memory 8 gigabytes of RAM, graphics cards needs to be at least an Nvidia GeForce GTX 660 or an AMD Radeon R9 280, you need to have DirectX version 12, SSD of 45 gigabytes with available space, and as you could probably would have guessed, you need a broadband internet connection, which nowadays most people will have. Now those specs are actually pretty low and that is just the minimum, but I'm guessing a lot of you slayers out there already got a computer that's at least that powerful. So now we'll move into the recommended specifications for PC. First up, operating system, Windows 10 64-bit, processor of an Intel Core i5 4670K or AMD R3 1300X. They recommend at least 16 gigabytes of RAM for the graphics card, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970 or an AMD Radeon RX 470. You'll need a DirectX version 12. For storage, you need an SSD, the same as the minimum specs, 45 gigabytes of available space and a broadband internet connection. Now, important to note, Diablo 4 will attempt to run on hardware below the minimum specification, including hard drives, dual core CPUs, and integrated GPUs. However, the game may experience significant or diminished quality if you do not meet the minimum requirements. Now, should you pre-purchase Diablo 4? First off, we have already discussed that you will only get access to the early beta if you pre-purchase the game. Now, first up for the standard edition, you get the Anaris Wings and the Anaris Murloc Pet in Diablo 3. You get the Amalgam of Rage Mount for World of Warcraft, and you get the umber winged darkness cosmetic set in diablo immortal the next step up is the digital deluxe edition you get all of that stuff along with up to four days of early access to the actual diablo 4 launch you get the seasonal battle pass unlock in diablo 4 the temptation mount in diablo 4 and the hellbound carapace mount armor in diablo 4 and finally for the highest ultimate edition you get all of the stuff mentioned before along with an accelerated seasonal battle pass unlock for Diablo 4, including a premium season battle pass, plus 20 tier skips and a cosmetic. And then also you'll get Wings of the Creator emote in Diablo 4. Now these three separate tiers cost $70 American for the standard edition, $90 American for the digital deluxe edition, and $100 American for the ultimate edition. Now, since you get access to the early open beta by pre-purchasing the game, I wanted to give you all this information so you can decide whether it's worth it for you or not to go ahead and pre-purchase.